everyone. Welcome to Take Two Radio Junior. I'm Pam, your host. I hope you all have been enjoying your weekend. Uh, I'm in Chicago, and it's a, it's a decent day. It's not one of the best. The sun wasn't out enough for me. I love, love, love the summer. I love the sunshine, and we need a little bit more of it here today. Um, for all the kids that are out of school for the summer, I hope you're doing something fun. And... Uh, you know, maybe come and pick me up and take me to the beach with you or something. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Drea couldn't be here today, so I will be speaking with our guest, and I am very, very pleased to have with me today children's author Richard Mastrantonio, and he will be reading his book, The Adventures of Gordon, The Little Duck Bunny. I do believe I have Richard with me. Let me go ahead and pick this up. Hi, Richard? Pam. Yes, hey, could you hear me? Hey, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. you Thank you for having me on your show. You're very welcome. I'm so very, very happy that you could join us today. And I know that I'm excited to hear about your book. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, where, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, well, I'm 54 years old. I live in New Jersey. Um, I'm in retail sales. I'm in home furnishings as a full-time job. I have the most amazing 28-year-old daughter anyone could ask for. She's a science teacher. And now I'm, I'm here on the radio with you. Couldn't be better than that. <laughs> I love that your daughter's a teacher. What made her interested in that? Especially science. Uh, My gosh, that's not easy. Yeah, I, I think it's a great accomplishment. Her mom was a teacher, she and she always loved it, and she likes kids. Um, she teaches 7th and 8th grade, and she's wild about it. She's uh, she's very dedicated and very proud of her. Well, tell her thank you from me, because I know it's not an easy job, and I'm so very happy that she's willing to do it, and especially 7th and 8th graders. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble years. <laughs> So where did the idea of writing a children's book come from? Well, I was always interested in writing. Um, I went to college for journalism, communications, and 40 years ago, I would have been writing the great American novel, but at 54 years old, I'm happy to have a children's book. Um, it's a little character I've always thought up. I, I used to tell my little nieces and nephews all kinds of adventures of Gordon. It was always in my head, and mm -hmm. I just had friends tell me, put it down on paper. Run with it. And I did. Well, good thing you listened to them. <laughs> 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 you know, we don't always sometimes do that, or we say tomorrow, 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 and you know how that goes. So. Well, I said tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow for about eight years. Did you? So, <laughs> tomorrow's here. Here we are. Tomorrow came. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the first book you've ever written, and are there any plans to write another book? Well, yeah, I'm in the process right now. Um, next year, Gordon goes to school. Oh, good. Yeah, good. so That's there'll be a... Uh, interesting. The characters I introduce in the first book will have a, a little bit more play in the second book. And, um, yeah, it'll be Gordon's going to go to school next year. Time oh, flies. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why, why don't you go ahead and tell our listeners what a duck a bunny is, which is who Gordon is. Gordon is a duck a bunny. He's half duck and half bunny. He looks like a little gray bunny, but he has a, a yellow bill and he has yellow webbed feet. And he wears a baseball shirt and a blue baseball cap with the letter G on it. And he's he's adorable. He is. He really is. I've seen the cover of your book, and uh, he's just so, so, so cute. I mean, I could just picture having him as part of my family. So, um, And you've done that by writing this story. You'll be able to make Gordon part of everybody's family at that point. I hope so. I hope, I I hope, it's, every child, I hope it's every child's next best friend. Yes. 
<laughs> I have a strong feeling once they hear your story and they go out and purchase the book and their parents read it to them, or if they're old enough to read it themselves or at least follow along, Gordon will be their new buddy and they'll be looking forward to the next book. Now, what age would you recommend this book for? Well, I mean, as as to read to a child at two years old, I would say up to eight years old. But it's a family book, too. Oh, it's a family and, and book, people, absolutely. Yeah. People will understand that more, our listeners will understand that more once you start reading it and see, because I, I already know what the book's about, so I, I can say those things. <laughs> uh, do you have any upcoming book signings that you'd like to share with our listeners? I do. Um, I'll be at Moondoggy Coffee Roasters in Maywood, New Jersey on September 12th from 1 to 4, and I'll be at the Bookmark Shop uh, in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, on 3rd Avenue, between 12 and 2, and that's on September 13th. And the book, is actually, going to be, the book is actually going to be released um, on Barnes & Noble and Amazon August 25th. That's the official release date. Okay, great, great. And I'll be adding that to the website once it goes live. Um, but for now, they can get it at Tate Publishing, correct? Yes, tatepublishing.com. Just put in the adventures of Gordon, and you'll see everything. Awesome. And if anybody wants to contact you to do a book signing or maybe read to, you know, maybe libraries or schools or something like that, how do they contact you? Oh, they could reach out on my email would be, I think, the easiest, uh, which is Ricky M. R I C K Y M nineteen sixty one at Yahoo. Okay. Okay. And I know that you have a Facebook page, but it's a personal one right now. So I think yeah. that soon Gordon should have his own Facebook page when you get time. Um, because he is going to school, he's going to be growing and getting his own <laughs> audience. So hint hint. <laughs> baby steps, Pam, baby steps. Yeah. <laughs> I know how that goes. <laughs> You'll get there, I'm sure. Um, I will. Why don't you <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and read the story for our listeners now? I'm very excited to hear this. Thank you. I will. You're welcome. The Adventures of Gordon the Little Ducker Bunny. It's here, the first day of spring. As the sun rises, all the residents of Woodland Acres are scurrying to prepare their homes for spring. Priscilla Porcupine the wife of the mayor, gently sweeps her front walkway. After all, she wouldn't want to get her pink shoes or her pink bows dirty. Her son Percy looks on. Priscilla always has Percy dressed in a little gray suit with short pants and a bow tie. After all, little gentlemen don't get dirty either. The mayor, Preston Porcupine, is late as usual, so he's running off to work in a frantic huff. Skatey Katie is helping to clean, too. She's always on roller skates and wears a big purple bow in her hair, and has a purple skating skirt. So it's fun for her to skate around her tree, sweeping away the last remains of winter. High up in Katie's tree is Bob and Robin. He is very busy weaving a new nest for Mrs. Robin and her three eggs, which should be hatching very soon. Squat Squirrel is helping his dad open his fitness center for the season. Squat loves to exercise and is always there to help his friends by lifting heavy things for them. Meanwhile, Priscilla needs to plant flowers in her yard, and that is too big and too messy of a job for her to do so she's thinking about who she could ask to help her. After all, everyone is busy with their own chores. I know, she exclaimed. Turtle Tom and Turtle Tim, they'll help me. But my goodness, I haven't seen them for two whole springs since they moved to the end of the forest near the riverbank. Priscilla pondered. Well, she said to Percy, we'll just have to venture to the end of the forest and call on them. They should be easy to find. After all, they live in a big purple mushroom with big yellow dots all over it. So off they went in search of Turtle Tom and Turtle Tim. It wasn't long before they saw the great mushroom and hurried to it before it got dark, and they didn't need to worry Preston. He's always worrying about enough things as it is. As they approached the turtle's home, Priscilla noticed a swing set in the yard and toys strewn all over the lawn. That's odd, thought Priscilla. Why would they have toys in the yard? Priscilla hurried to knock on the door. After a few moments, the door swung open, and there stood a... Uh, uh, a little boy who looked sort of like a bunny, but also like a duck. Who are you, asked Priscilla. I'm Gordon. Who are you, asked the little boy. 
I am Priscilla Porcupine, and this is my son, Percy. We are here to see Turtle Tom and Turtle Tim. Sure, I'll get them for you. Gordon then yelled, Hey, Dad, there's a lady all dressed in pink to see you. Dad, how is that possible, Priscilla said to Percy. Turtle Tom came to the door, reminding Gordon we don't shout in the house. And then he said to Priscilla, How nice to see you and Percy. Please come in. Gordon and Percy went out to play in the yard while Turtle Tom and Turtle Tim told Miss Priscilla the story of how they became a family. Turtle Tom explained that during the first spring when they moved to the riverbank, he was clearing the leaves and twigs surrounding their house when he noticed an egg stuck in the sand on the riverbank. After examining it closer, they realized there was a hatchling inside of it, so they brought it in the house and kept it warm. They attended to the egg for weeks until one day it started to hatch. When what was inside emerged, they were so excited. Gordon was the cutest little boy they ever seen. They immediately fell in love with their new son. As Gordon started to grow, they realized he had characteristics of a bunny and a duck. He had long floppy ears in the body of a bunny and a yellow bill and yellow webbed feet of a duck. They had never seen this before and had no idea where he came from, but it certainly didn't matter. They loved him just the same. Miss Priscilla listened to their story in disbelief, but it was true. Gordon was half bunny and half duck. Anyway, Percy didn't mind. He and Gordon were out in the yard having so much fun. It seemed like they were becoming very good friends. Be that as it may, said Priscilla, the reason I'm here is to ask if the two of you will plant my garden for me like you used to. Preston is all too busy, and I have no idea where to begin. So will the two of you help me tomorrow? No, said Turtle Tom, but the three of us will. The next morning, Gordon and his dad set out to Miss Priscilla's house to start planting her flowers. Gordon was in charge of carrying the shovels, and that was a very important job. Before long, they arrived, all of them wearing denim overalls and carrying all the tools they would need to make Miss Priscilla's garden the prettiest in the forest. When Percy saw his new friend outside his house, he wanted to help too, but his mom told him he had to stay inside so he wouldn't get dirty. As the morning went on, Turtle Tom and Turtle Tim were teaching Gordon how to dig in the dirt and how to plant flowers. Gordon was excited to be helping and having fun, too. Meanwhile, Percy was listening to Gordon and his dads laughing and working and was wishing he was helping, too. Please, Mom, please, can I help in the garden, too? Absolutely not, said Priscilla. Besides, you don't have denim overalls. What will you wear? As they finished for the day, they said their goodbyes and would be back early tomorrow to finish up. When Preston came home from work, Percy told his dad everything that happened that day. He was so excited to tell his dad about Gordon and his dads and how much fun Gordon had in the garden, and why don't they ever do fun things like that? Percy also told his dad that Gordon was his new best friend. The following morning, Turtle Tom, Turtle Tim, and Gordon arrived bright and early to finish the garden. When Percy saw them, he went back to bed. After all, his mom wasn't going to let him help. But after Turtle Tom spoke to Miss Priscilla about what he brought for Percy, everything changed. There was a knock on Percy's bedroom door, and there stood Gordon holding a package and giving it to Percy. What's this, said Percy, as he opened the bag. Oh, my, it was a pair of denim overalls, and Gordon's dad asked Percy's mom if Percy could help, and she said yes. Percy ran outside as fast as he could. He was so excited to help in the garden and to be with his best friend, too. It was the best day ever for Gordon and Percy. The end. Oh, my gosh. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. so great. I'm telling you, I could picture all of those characters with their little outfits on and, you know, going along with the story as you're telling it to each different place. Love the names. How did you go that? <laughs> just in my head. Just, just, just what's rolling around in my head. <laughs> Katie, Katie, Katie is a skunk, by the way. It doesn't say it in the copy, but the picture of it, she's a skunk on roller yeah. skates. <laughs> My little nieces love her the best, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I have little seven-year-old great nieces. They, they want to be skatey for, uh, for Halloween all the time. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. I love that. See, you've already made a difference in somebody's life and in your own families, but it's going to grow from there. I'm sure that all the people that purchased your books recently at the, uh, the book fair that you were at are having a good time with it as well. Um. What exactly do you want our listeners or the readers to take away from your book? What's the moral of the story? Well, the moral of the story 
is we're all different. We all have, we, we, we all don't conform to the same look, um, and it's okay. You know, I feel kids should, kids should know it's okay to be different. Don't label yourself, because if you don't, others won't either. Um, I feel kids that grow up with confidence and, um, and self-esteem, when they're at that, that, that funny age of early teens, they, they won't be so quick to give in to peer pressure because they'll be confident in themselves, and they, and they won't be ashamed to say no to something they feel isn't right. So it's just about being different and that it's okay to be different. That, that's, bas- that's basically it. And that's an extremely important lesson, um, and I think that more and more people are understanding that nowadays with so many things going on with the, oh, I don't even want to call it hate, but it, it really is. I mean, it, it's, it's more of a misunderstanding, I think, at a lot of times, too, and especially when you're a child and you see these different things and you're not taught about them, that it is normal, that everybody's different in some way, that a book like this can help that a lot. Right, and I, I feel like right now, in the year 2015, um, the average family isn't mother, father, 2.4 children in a station wagon. Right. You know, right. We, have, we have kids living with their grandparents, aunts, uncles, uh, single moms, uh, same-sex uh, families. It's, it, it's a plethora of, uh, of, of, of differences, but as long as there's love and, and the child is being nurtured and, and being taught the right things, it, it doesn't matter as long as it's a family unit. Exactly. And family is what you make it. Like you said, it's not just, you know, mom and dad and 2.4 kids. Family is what you make it. You can be a family no matter what. Even with friends, you can be family. If you have really good, close friends like I have, I I could say, you know, so-and-so is like my sister to me because they are my family. I feel that way about them. So I, I love what your book is talking about, what it's teaching children, and maybe even some adults, too, that pick it up and read it to their kids. I hope so. That was the intent. Definitely, and I thank you for that. Now, another question is, did you have a hand in doing the illustrations in the book, too, or did you have somebody do that for you? Well, the illustrations um, were done by my publisher. Uh, they're illustrators, but it was under my direction. So we would go back and forth, what it looked like, what, what I wanted to change, what I wanted. So it was done under my direction, but it wasn't my hand doing the drawing. But the Are illustrator was fabulous. in that way? <laughs> Can you draw? Uh, not like this. I, 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 I used to do painting with acrylics, but not, not, nothing like this. But I know my, my head visualized the characters, and I didn't say okay until, until it looked exactly what was in my head. Yeah, <laughs> and they and they did a fa- they did a fabulous job. And I can I can say I don't blame you there because when you have something in your head and you don't see it that way exactly, you're not going to be happy with it if you go, oh well, that's just good enough. Let's just go with that. Because then once exactly. you get to print, you'll you'll be looking at it going, oh no, not quite. I didn't want it that way. So sometimes perfection is a good thing. And sometimes well, I lived with, let it go. <laughs> I, I lived with Gordon in my head for so long. Mm-hmm. And I, I, to me, he's like a person. And I knew, I, in my head, I knew exactly what he looked like. And then to see life breathe into him, uh, I wanted to be what, what, what I carried around for all those years in my head. And they, right. hit, they, hit, it, they hit it right on. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. I mean, it's hard to find a lot of people to work with that can picture what you're talking about because sometimes it's hard to put into words. So you got a good team there. Thank you. You're very welcome. So I want to thank you very, very much for joining us today and for reading your story live on air. It was a pure pleasure to have you. I enjoyed it very much. And when you get the next book out, be sure to contact me. I'll be very happy to have you back again. Pam, I can't thank you enough. And to your listeners, thank you. Have a wonderful night, and God bless. You too. Thank you so much. Good night, Richard. Good night. Bye-bye. For our listeners, be sure to check out TatePublishing.com. Actually, have your mom and dad do that. Or also go to Take2RadioJunior.com, and that's T-A-K-E, the number 2, Junior, J-R, dot com. 
And under the um, children's authors, you'll see the book. Okay, sorry about that. My dog just happens to be barking in the background. So go to take 2 com, and it's under children's authors. And pick up the book. You'll absolutely love it from what you, you've already heard it. So, you know, it would be a nice story to share with your kids over and over again. I'm working on the next guest, and I will put those on the website as well as Facebook and on Twitter when I have that all set. Everybody enjoy the rest of their Sunday. Take care, and we'll be back again soon. Bye-bye.